When it comes to talking about lockers, there's always plenty of discussion. Let's start with one of the simple ones. What is a differential locker? Well, automotive differentials have actually been around in mainstream since the 1920s. The problem with a open differential is that if one wheel is on a slippery surface, it actually allows all the drive from the vehicle to escape through that wheel. A uh, differential locker was developed so that you could actually lock the outside wheel's rotation to the inside wheels, force them to go at the same rate, and therefore not lose that traction through one spinning wheel. In what situations are diff lockers really valuable to a full driver? In off-roading, it's common to hit maybe uh, sandy conditions or muddy conditions or conditions of high articulation where you get one wheel in the air. As soon as you break that, that traction with the ground on one wheel, you have no drives. Now we exclusively make and sell the ARB air locker. What other types of lockers are available or do customers commonly have in their vehicles? Look, over the years we've seen auto lockers, electric lockers, selector fork driven lockers. Can you tell us a bit about auto lockers and maybe some things to look out for? Well, a little known fact about an auto locker is that it's actually an auto unlocker. You're driving around locked until one wheel tries to outspin the other wheel, at which point the auto locker will break that wheel free. So basically you, you've got one wheel drive and it's driving at the speed of the motor and the outside wheel is over spinning. Problem number one is the outside wheel in a corner is actually the wheel you want to be driven. That's the wheel that is loaded onto the ground. That's where you want the power to be, not to be disconnected from the vehicle. Problem number two is that as you're driving around, you're usually locked. So you will feel that auto locker kick in and kick out with a clunk as you drive. And that's, that's putting wear and shock all the way through your drivetrain, back and forth, back and forth as you drive around. You're, it's wear on the tires as well. It's, it's not what you would call a, uh, a locker that's got road manners. Well, Dan, I've actually managed to get my hands on an electric locker out of an OE vehicle. Are you able to run us through exactly how these work? Sure. So in an electric locker, the electromagnet is not free to rotate and stay stationary. And when energized, it tries to attract this plate it puts a torque on it and that rotates this ball ramp and when it rotates that ball ramp around it causes these balls to ride up their respective ramps and that creates a force that puts the uh, locking gear into lock but if you change direction in the vehicle you must pass the bottom of the ramp again so every time you are going back and forth at an obstacle it's going lock unlock unlock, lock, unlock. unlock. the negatives to locking and unlocking all the time is that not only do you have that weight for it to lock in again, you've got multiple engagements where you're, every time you engage, you're wearing the edges of the, the dog teeth. Also, the electromagnet, like all electromagnets, are heat generating. You can see this one that we plugged in just at, in room temperature room, and we achieve somewhere between 149 and 177 degrees Celsius. Interesting point, the, the temperature we achieved on this uh, magnet housing is actually in excess of the flash point of some oils, literally close to the temperature at which oil will ignite. Well, I guess, what's the, the issue with having this additional heat in your oil? Uh, well, firstly, having the temperature reduces the viscosity of the oil, makes it act like a lower grade of oil than you actually have. And one of the primary purposes of having oil in there to start with is to carry heat away from the mechanical components in your differential, things like your bearings, things like your ring and pinion set. So your oil is your coolant and that is just raising the temperature of that oil and reducing its ability to cool everything. Comparatively, how much heat would you expect compressed air to put into an air locker? Uh, well, an air locker actually just uses the air to push the clutch gear into place and stop all movement of any kind inside the diff. So an air locker actually runs much cooler locked than it does unlocked. One of the most common statements we probably get thrown at us around electric lockers is, well, all the OEs are using them, so they're obviously of a standard that's, that's suitable. What, what do you have to say to that? Look, an electric locker is a budget option. An electromagnet at the end of the day is cheaper than an air compressor your car came out of the factory with a certain grade of tires on it as well and I don't know anybody four-wheel driving on factory tires out there. I think probably one of the more laughable comments we get is, oh but with, a, with an air locker you need to have a compressor. Who on earth would want to be going off-road without a compressor? 
Yeah, we've always said if you can't afford an air locker and a compressor, just get the compressor first and come back for the locker. So what are some of the design elements that have been introduced or, or have always been carried, I guess, with air locker to ensure that our four-wheel driving customers don't come up against these issues? It's the air is what it comes down to. The air pressure of anywhere up to 150 PSI behind an air locker annual seal creates somewhere in the neighborhood of sort of three or 400 kilograms worth of locking force. Air locker has always just had that on its side that when you hit the button, the gears get driven straight home. We're not exposed to the sort of damage you get from, from light wheel spin or speeds or anything like that uh, in the system. Uh, the only thing the, the modern day air locker requests that the drivers don't have your foot flat on the mat. Other than that, go as fast as you want, drive around corners, uphill, downhill, it doesn't matter. Lock when you want to lock and it'll be straight locked. What about unlocking? Unlocking is virtually instantaneous. Because we have so much force going into lock, we have a lot of uh, spring pressure backing it out of lock. And so how long has AIB been making the AIB air locker for? Oh, we've been doing air lockers since the uh, early 80s. Where are air lockers made? Air lockers are 100% made here in Australia. The castings are poured in Adelaide and in Sydney. The gears are broached and hardened here in, in Melbourne. The, all the machining for the castings is done at our head office in Kilsyth. Apart from when we took the quantum shift of moving from a three-piece to a two-piece locker in the early 2000s, and we've never gone out with, say, to say, hey, here's a whole new, brand new locker that we've introduced. But to my best understanding, there's been a lot of changes over those years. Yeah, we haven't re-released air locker but every year's air locker that we put out there is better than the year before materials that are become available on the market gear making technology surface treatments there's there's a lot of things that we have gained access to as air locker has evolved that we've integrated into air locker to keep it on that first position on the market i know that we've been a sponsor for king of the hammers and the ultra fours over in the us tell us a little bit more about how that experience has helped evolve today's lockers that we use in, in everyday cars like those behind us yeah well i suppose you can ask the question how do you develop the best locker for a what today is a, is a, up to a 300 horsepower vehicle well that's to actually design it to work with an 800 horsepower vehicle. The vehicles are heavy, they run 44, 45, 46 inch tires. The horsepower is unlimited and we put our differential in there and make it live for those guys. And so the technology we get from learning how to do that allows us to build the recreational product we do. Learning everything that we've learned today about air lockers versus electric lockers, if, if you're a customer and you're thinking, hey, actually, I want to have the confidence of an air locker in my car, is the option there to actually replace uh, an OE electric locker and replace it with an air locker? Yeah, look, air lockers got 200 live part numbers, models of air locker covering thousands of applications. And some of our top selling most popular applications are lockers that were specifically designed just to replace electric lockers. Because when the electric locker fails, or is not performing the way the customer wants, you know, we're, we're there to help. What are some of the maybe considerations for some of the other air locker manufacturers on the market? You know, are there any differentiations between their design and our design? There are a few other manufacturers on the market that are using air actuated lockers that stem from earlier days of our design. I guess they say that imitation is the greatest form of flattery. What's always hard for us to swallow is when we do see so many copies coming and, and direct copies maybe coming from very subpar uh, manufacturing warehouses. I know that's something you've had a bit of experience with. Oh uh, look, absolutely. Uh, copies of Airlocker uh, claiming to be the same as us, claiming to be uh, the, the real deal, but um, I suppose a copy of an Airlocker is to an air locker what gold plated jewelry is to the uh, the real solid gold deal they've made something that looks like our product the money in air locker engineering and manufacture is in the materials that's going into it and the the processes that go into making the gearing and locking system the way we do what are some of the things that need to be considered by a customer to make sure that, that they maintain these lockers and they're always there ready to work when they need them the air locker itself has no maintenance requirements up and above what the vehicle does itself. But that said, you need to run a, a differential oil that's gonna match what you do, the climate you live in and how hard you're gonna use the vehicle, the size of the tires on your vehicles. If you do river crossings, you might wanna check for water in your oil a little more often than you would in a road car. Really, it's, it's no additional maintenance up and above what, what makes sense for four-wheel driving. 
When you talk about uh, river crossings and maybe taking in some water, hey, I can again attest to that situation. There's no excuse if you're going to go and do river crossings not to install a diff breather kit. ARB have one of the best diff breather kits on the market, so we strongly encourage you to go and have that done first and foremost. The second thing is, if you do get into a situation where you get water in your diff, you want to dump that ASAP. You can't just go to your owner's manual and look up the specification for diff oil and think that I'm just going to chuck in the same 80 watt 90 diff oil. Now we're talking about harder wearing stuff. You might be doing some really heavy, decent four wheel driving and, and therefore we're getting a lot more heat in, in that diff. What kind of oil considerations need to be made? What weights are they looking for if they're going to go and, and buy some oils for their diff? Yeah, look, oil is uh, very misunderstood um, across the industry. You can't actually describe an oil just purely by its weight. You can't describe an oil certainly by just listing its manufacturer. All of the major brand oil manufacturers sell bottom shelf and top shelf versions of their oil. We encourage you and, and prescribe um, certain qualifications for an oil in our operating manual that would suggest that you want an oil that has actually been formulated for a high load bearing because it, and it's not actually for the air locker itself as much as it is to protect your ring and pinion meshing faces but the, the idea being larger tires more engine horsepower adding extra traction to your vehicle by having an air locker actually means you can put more load through the differential than you could if you didn't have an air locker uh, you need an oil that's that's been formulated to handle that sort of load and that's that's all in our guide we've always had that question i can only afford to maybe put one locker in at the moment do i do it the rear or do i do the front so help explain to us about how maybe why a, a front locker these days is is even a more tangible or, or considered purchase than what it was in years gone by i think it's been the introduction of ifs in modern day four-wheel drives in the old days with live axle fronts it was far less common to lift a wheel into the air modern ifs vehicles you don't need much of an obstacle before you've actually picked a wheel right up in midair and once again with an open differential you lift a wheel and you've lost all of the drive from that axle so you've converted your four-wheel drive into a two-wheel drive and that's where the front diff is going to come in handy having a lock differentials front and rear really does give you a huge amount more control over your four-wheel drive not only does it mean that you can maybe take on more challenging obstacles but it actually means you can take on all obstacles a lot slower it's, it's no secret that momentum can actually help you get further across an obstacle than, than you could have if you didn't use speed. Um, if you lose traction, momentum may be all you have left. Everybody knows nine times out of ten when a vehicle gets broken while four-wheel driving, it's because somebody did something using speed. Removing that need for momentum and allowing you to actually drive a track far more cautiously and consciously also plays a huge amount into yours and your family's safety. Tackle a track nice and easily, slowly, knowing at every point that you're going to have good control over your vehicle makes it a far less stressful environment. So if you're interested in ensuring that your vehicle is not only the safest but also the most capable, we highly recommend you come into one of our ARB stores and stockers, have a chat with our experienced sales staff and talk about the ARB air locker and what's available for your vehicle.